Jesus. Oh, clap your hands and bless him in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Said I'm glad. Good Sunday morning. Welcome to worship here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. I'm Pastor Paul L. Anderson. What a great joy it is to worship God with you as we have found this moment in time that we can give him the glory, the honor and the praise. What an awesome God we serve. I love the way the singers just said it. I'm so glad I don't look like what I've been through. When we think about all that has happened in the past seven days, we think about uh, um, uh, the hurricane. We think about all the catastrophes that have happened after that, all of the fires that have taken place, all the people who have died. Uh, we thank God that he gives us the confidence in knowing that he will be with us. He will lead us and guide us. Let's always remember to pray for our brothers and sisters. And I tell you, the choir has inspired our heart. The men, thank you. I'm so happy. I don't look like what I've been through. And I know you can say the same thing as well. The word of the Lord comes to us this morning as we call ourselves to worship. It says he fell to the ground at Jesus feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. May we bow our heads in prayer. Father, we want to be like the man in the text. We've come back to tell you thank you. Thank you for the wonderful things you've done in our lives. Father, we thank you for the dangers seen and unseen you've brought us through. Now we invite you in this service of worship. Help us to put our focus on you. We know that we have had interesting events. We thank you. We've had tragedies and we've had triumphs. But be with us this morning that we can give you the glory, the honor and the praise. So come and abide with us. These and all other blessings we ask in your son, Jesus name, our Savior. Amen, amen and amen. Come on, choir. Remind us how the Lord wants us to rise above everything that's around us and give him the glory, the honor and the praise. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to see one more day. See 
let the glory of the Lord let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us let the praises of our King you, but I feel the glory of the Lord rising among us. And you know, whenever the Lord shows up, he shows out and his spirit is made known. Today, I hope you feel the presence of the Lord there with you, wherever you are. I know I feel him here with me because God is in this place. We're so grateful for our men. We thank God for all of our musicians. We thank God for all of you, the people of God and all that we do to make this happen. We can't help but always say thank you to our uh, production manager, uh, Gary Leach. We thank him for the wonderful ways in which he produces all of our um, ways in which we send out our message by audio and video. Thank you, Brother Gary Leach. May the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. And we thank God for you and for your gift. Keep on keeping on, as the old folk would say. You know, we're here in this month, this month of October. It's a very, it's a very powerful month in all of our lives. It's a time in which many people all over, it's called Clergy Appreciation Month. It's a time in which you and I should take a moment to thank those who have been our spiritual directors in our lives, those who have been our deacons, those who've been our ministers, those who have been our pastors, those who have have been our presiding elders, our bishops, and those who have been the ones presiding over um, organizations uh, that bring about spiritual nourishment. Let's take a moment to thank all of those people for their ministry. You know, oftentimes we forget that ministry is not just in the church. Ministry comes from and through and by the Lord to the various ways in which people can be ministered to. We have to remember how this month is also a moment in time that we talk about domestic violence and those who have been victims of domestic violence you find out that there is a ministry specifically for them. And I hope that you and I can embrace um, persons as they go through very challenging times in their home life, in their domestic life, to let them know that God loves them and there are people who care and there are people who want to walk them through their pain, their tragedy, and get them to the moment of triumph. And we're grateful for that. We know and many of us have been a part of this for years uh, that we uh, put focus on Alzheimer's. And there's a big walk that takes place here in Raleigh. And I, I don't know about you, but I've been impacting my family of persons who've had Alzheimer's, those who've had dementia. My mother passed away from complications of, of dementia. And all of us know dementia is in Alzheimer's. It's like a second death. It's like when that family member, that loved one is no longer there with you mentally. That's one thing. But then to miss their physical presence 
as well as grieve that they don't even know who you are, uh, what pain that could cause. So let's all of us do our very best to help others to be able to find the reasons and the ways in which we can target this uh, this uh, terrible kind of situation, uh, this illness that we call dementia and Alzheimer's, that we can um, always have a good remembrance of what God has done in our lives. You see, I'm wearing pink. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I know there's some very dear women and men in my life who have been impacted by breast cancer cancer, those who've had it. Um, I always thank God uh, for uh, how they have just been able to make it through those challenging days. Uh, my niece Charisma, God bless you, and Kim and our congregation and, and so many others. If I start calling names, I'll be up here all day. But we thank God for those women who have done the best they could of making sure that they kept themselves healthy. And ladies and men, we want to remind you to do your ample best to do your um, self exams as well as go to the doctor. And I'm wearing my pink pen. I'm one of those men that I am not afraid to wear pink and I'm so grateful. I wear it proudly um, for all of those men and women who are survivors, as well as I wear it in memory of those who have touched our lives in so many ways. And may we always treasure their memory and let's do our ample best to fund and to find a cure. Now, early detection is the key. I hope you and I can do that. And we're so grateful for those of you who will and those who do. You know, there's always a word um, from the Lord for us. And the word of the Lord always reminds us that God wants us to be proactive in our community, in our homes and in our lives. Today, we're in October. We're getting down to those final weeks, those final days for election. All of us know it's time for those midterm elections. Here in Wake County, we have early voting. Those of you who have um, who have decided you're going to vote early. I'm one of those people. I try to vote the first day of early voting uh, so that I can help others get the vote out and get everyone out to vote. If you are not a registered voter, uh, you have an opportunity during early voting. You can do what they call same day uh, registration and same day voting. During the early voting period, if you're not a registered voter, you can vote. You have to bring some um, information to show that you are a resident and that that is your correct address. And so we want to make sure that all of us make sure that we have all of our information correct, that we vote at the right precinct because you don't want to cast a provisional ballot. We want all those ballots to be cast and always support the candidates of your choice, not only with your vote, but put out your financial resources to help them get their message out. There's so much that we've heard in the airways and you and I need to filter the truth out of all of what we've heard. So do your research and talk to those people who are credible, who can tell you what the real issues are. Let's take care of this democracy that God placed in our hands. Remember when Jesus left, he left this in our hands. So let's be good stewards over everything that he's given to us, our mind, our bodies, our spirits, and our public policy in the land in which we live. Today, I wanna to call your attention into the word of God. If you would look with me at Luke's gospel, the 17th chapter, uh, verses 11 through 19 from the New Living Translation. Today is that 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, today is October 9th. What a powerful day, October 9th. It was on October 9th that my parents got married. They're now gone on to be with the Lord. And um, it's my assumption that they're uh, together in heaven with Almighty God and all the rest of the saints of the ages. Uh, but mom and dad got married on October 9th, a day that will always uh, be precious in the life and the hearts of all my brothers and my sisters, my siblings that was born to that union because had not mom and dad got together, none of us would be here. I'm so grateful for my eight siblings and for all of their families and how God causes us to have moments of remembrance to thank God for the powerful things he's done. So thank you to my dad, Leroy Anderson Sr., and my mom, Viola C. Anderson, um, for what God did by bringing the two of you together, uh, which helped make all of our lives and my life possible. Today, as we look at this word, it's a word that comes to us. Remember, Luke is one of those uh, apostles, one of those disciples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Luke was a physician, and it's amazing how Luke writes to us about miraculous healings that God has done. And today is like none other. It's a moment in time that you and I can reflect and think about the powerful ways in which God is moving in the lives of his believers. We find the text. It's a text that begins to help us see that Jesus and his disciples are leaving Jerusalem. They're leaving the place of the synagogue and they're making their way um, uh, to uh, the area between uh, Galilee and Samaria. And as they're traveling, Jesus always has these encounters. 
you know, God is always at work and God is always moving. And as Jesus was moving with his disciples, he always happened upon situations. And I think it was divine providence because God wanted to show his hand strong through and by the life of his son, Jesus the Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, who became God wrapped up in flesh to identify with all of the challenges that you and I would face. So he too, just as we would be tempted in all ways, but yet he was without sin. A text today from the 11th verse says, as Jesus continued towards Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, 10 men with leprosy stood at a distance crying out, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. And he fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. For a sermon today, I have entitled this, I came back to say thank you. I can only speak for myself. I came back to say thank you. I can only speak for myself. Uh, this text, if you look at the backdrop of it, is a very profound text. Remember, Jesus and his disciples have just left the synagogue. They have left Jerusalem. They're near uh, the area of Galilee and Samaria. Now, remember, whenever you talk about Samaria, remember, this is where Jews and Gentiles were together. And some of them had come together as husband and wife, and some of them had had children. And there were people um, that were not considered to be Jews. And so we find out this text is so insightful to us because it lets us see that Jesus is with his disciples and he's on a mission. It tells us, first of all, that you and I have to always be on a mission. I can remember years ago, I, I served a church uh, in Granville County in Creedmoor. It was called the Rock Spring Baptist Church. And there was a group there uh, by the name of uh, John Landis and the Golden Echoes. And John Landis used to sing this song along with his brother Claude and all the rest of the guys. I'm on a mission for the king. You know, it lets us see that Jesus, who is the king of kings, was on a mission with his disciples. His mission was to go about doing good. And the text lets us see that as he gets to this region, he happens upon a situation of 10 men who have been victimized, who have found themselves victims of a very hideous disease of their day known as leprosy. Leprosy was a very interesting disease. As you know, in the Old Testament, there was a man by the name of Naaman. Naaman caught leprosy. Leprosy was not a respect of persons in the same way. Neither is breast cancer, neither is dementia, neither is domestic violence. It can happen to anybody if situations are not managed correctly. And now we begin to see that these men were together as a, a group of 10. Uh, there were 10 of them that were identified specifically in this passage. Now, when persons contracted leprosy, they were banished from society because it was believed that leprosy was somewhat airborne or you come in contact with a person, much like what we've had to deal with with coronavirus, COVID-19 and monkeypox. It finds itself making its way and interrupting the lives of these 10 men. The text talks about the 10. It said these men were all together in a leprous colony. But as the text unfolds, we'll find out that nine of them happened to be Jewish and one of them was a foreigner. He was a Samaritan. See, Samaritans were not considered as clean, not considered as Jews. So when Jesus tells them all to go to the temple to show themselves to the priest, I believe he does this for a reason. You know, it's amazing that we say misery loves company. Have you ever heard people who began to tell their story about what they've been dealing with, how bad life has been for them? You know, I can remember the story that is told about these women who were talking about how life was bad and how things were happen. And there was this one lady who was talking to the another one. The lady was talking about all the different health challenges, she said. And she said, ever since I met Arthur, I just don't get out like I, I need to. She said, Arthur, I thought your husband's name was Ben. She said, yeah, I'm talking about arthritis. Arthritis has plagued me in such a way I can never seem to do what I want to do since Arthur came into my life. You know, see, some of us have had things to come into our lives and we found out that it can happen to anybody. 
I never would have believed in my in my short lived life that I would have had two knees replaced. Well, it can happen to anybody. I never would have believed in my life some of the health challenges that I face as many of us. And I don't know about you, but I had COVID-19. I never thought I would have COVID-19. I thought I did all the right things I needed to do. I got my shots. I got my boost. Hadn't got my second booster. But I wound up having COVID-19. Don't know where I caught it, but it found me. Leprosy found these men. And when leprosy found these men, it is amazing that when people find themselves having the same dilemma, they create a bond. Wouldn't it be awesome if all of us could create a bond because we are all the children of God. God loved us all. Wouldn't it be great if we could all bond together and and strive for the cause to eradicate breast cancer, to eradicate Alzheimer's, to eradicate dementia, to eradicate domestic violence, to do everything within our power to deal with not only the health, but the sociological ills of our day. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could come together for that cause? Well, these men had come together for the cause that they had been banished by their families. When you had leprosy, you couldn't go home anymore. When you had leprosy, nobody wanted you around. When you had leprosy, it was much the way we treated people with HIV AIDS in the 70s. It became a taboo. Everybody stayed away from them. Don't get close to me. Stay away. We didn't even want to be in the same room with them. But much of time has allowed us to learn so much more. These men find themselves hearing that Jesus is coming by. And the text lets us see that uh, they cried out, Jesus, master, have mercy upon us. Let's us hear secondly, that when you and I have a situation, all we have to do is cry out to Jesus. Notice they called him by name. They said, Jesus, they wanted to get his attention. I don't know about you. My mom and dad used to always tell us when you find yourself in a situation and you don't know what to do, you better call on the name of Jesus. You know, when we call on the name of Jesus, there's power in that name. The Bible says that demons tremble at the sound of that name. The Bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God, the father. You know, they said, have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sins. On this past week, Tuesday and Thursday, our Jewish brothers and sisters, as they began to celebrate, they are they celebrated the season of the year that they call Yom Kippur. It's the time in which it's the day of atonement. The sins are being forgiven. It's a time of fasting. It's a time in which they're sorrowful for their sins. You know, my brothers and sisters, for all of us, every day ought to be a day of Yom Kippur. It should be a day in which we repent of our sins to make about face and we seek God for the help and assistance that we need. These men knew that they were all in a plighted situation together. All of them knew that death was eventually on its way because when persons had leprosy, they would begin to lose their sight. They would begin to even lose uh, their ears and and lose some of their uh, digits on their hands. They begin to have body parts that seemingly just fell off. You know, that is so gruesome, but it begins to remind us how hideous the disease was. That's the reason why nobody wanted to be around them. They cried out, Jesus, we need you to have mercy upon us. And, you know, when you say, Lord, have mercy, he comes quick, fast and in a hurry. Jesus stops what he's doing. Notice the text. The text lets us see in verse 14. Jesus looked on them. You know, whenever you get Jesus attention, he will look at you. And when Jesus eyes comes into contact with our situation, the Bible begins to remind us how Jesus was always moved with compassion and how he was moved with passion to do something. Jesus was moved with compassion. He saw the man. I'm not sure if visually everybody thought he recognized the man who was a Samaritan. Because remember, they were dressed alike. Remember, they had to stay far away from people. But I think Jesus saw it. Jesus saw the man. He knew every last one of their situations. Jesus gives them a general statement. He says, go and show yourself to the priest. This is so important. In Hebraic life, because in order to be welcomed back into the society, the priest had to declare one clean. Remember, there were things that happened in a person's life that made them unclean. And in order for them to be clean and get back into society, they had to go and show themselves to the priest to show that this is a bona fide miracle. There has been a change in my life and I have been clean. 
as they went, the text lets us see that as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. It was nothing but the word of Jesus. In this text, Jesus doesn't reach out and touch them. Jesus doesn't sprinkle them with water. Jesus doesn't do anything miraculous with spittle. He just gives them his word. He says, go and show yourself to the priest. Now, in the process of going, that meant they willfully obeyed what God would have them to do. Now, when you and I willfully obey what God has called us to do, we find ourselves healed in the process of going. You know, so many times we forget that we are healed as we're on our way. Some of us want to see an instant miracle, but God lets them see and helps us to understand that as they went, they became cleansed. So as they went, remember, these were all men who had something in common. They all had leprosy. But as they were healed, the Samaritan noticed he didn't look like them anymore. And he looked at himself and he saw his situation and he says, I am not welcome to see the priest. I'm not Jewish. That's not a part of my tradition. I don't have the priest to thank. But what I can do is that I can speak to myself. So he I can speak for myself. He comes back and he says, thank you, Lord. Notice what the text says. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back to Jesus shouting and praising God. He fell at the ground at Jesus feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Oh, that's the insight. The insight was that the Samaritan wasn't welcome in the temple. That was not a part of his religious tradition. So the Samaritan said, I'm going to go back and thank the one who did great things for me. Oh, I remember Andre Crouch saying that song. I just want to take a little time right now and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. All of us who are here today, those of us who are watching and listening, we may not have been healed of leprosy, but God has done something for us. And whatever he's done for us, we've come back to tell him thank you. That's the reason week after week we come into a place that we can gather for worship. We come back to say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. You woke me up this morning. You started me on my way. You gave me the activity of my limbs. I am now clothed and in my right mind. I find myself not being possessed with any spirits, but I've come with the spirit of praise. I've come with the spirit and the attitude of gratitude to tell you, thank you for what I, for what you've done for me. The man says, I've come because I can speak for myself. Today, I want to ask you, can you speak for yourself? Can you tell the Lord, thank you for everything that he has done? Sometimes other people are saying thank you on our behalf, but we need to come for ourselves and say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done. I want to tell you thank you. I want to say gracias. I want to say merci beaucoup. I want to say thank you in every language that I know. But I want to say thank you in a demonstrative way of coming back to you, kneeling down at your feet to say thank you for what you've done. Because, Lord, I know you didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad you did. I am so glad that the men saying, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. And don't you know, when we get down at the feet of Jesus, it is then we're kneeling to say that you're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The man says, I have come back to say thank you. I want to speak for myself and say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done. Notice that Jesus, when he sees the man, he says, were there not 10 of you? And the man says, uh, I don't know about the other nine because Jesus asked him, where are the other nine? He says, I can't speak for them, but I can speak for myself. My brothers and sisters today, let's speak for ourselves. Let's tell everybody and let's tell God, I thank you for what you've done. And let's tell Jesus, I thank you for what you've done. Let's tell God's spirit, thank you for what you've done because you've set me free. You set me free from sin. All my sins have been forgiven. I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. I've been redeemed because of what you did for me at Calvary. So I came to say thank you for myself. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for healing my body. But thank you for giving me your spirit and giving to me eternal life. This man came to say thank you. Can you and I come and say thank you? Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Today, if you don't know him, you ought to receive God's precious gift of salvation. All you have to do is say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and save me. And then when we do that, we have to tell him, thank you for what he's done. 
Today, if you've asked him to come into your life and save you and you want to follow him in baptism, you want to become a part of our fellowship, we come with open arms to say you're welcome. Today, we invite you to email us and let us know that you would like to join with us as we join together for the King. All you have to do is email us at join at the fountain of Raleigh.org. And we want to pray for you and pray with you. If you have a prayer request, send it to us at prayer at the fountain of Raleigh.org. It is then and there that we can pray together. You know, everybody have heard the cliche. A family that prays together stays together. God wants his family, his children to pray together and to stay together. It's amazing that even when God has healed us, some of us begin to recognize our differences. All of us are not the same, but all of us have the same gift of salvation. So let's make sure that we share with everybody that we meet. Let's make sure we tell Jesus, thank you for what he's done. The text lets us see that Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has made you whole. When our faith causes us to re re receive our healing, let's use that same faith to tell others what God has done. You know, the faith that God has placed within us. Let's go and tell Jesus, thank you. But let's tell others that God is not a respect of persons. He did it for the ten. He can do it for you. He can do it for me. And let's ask him to do it right now. I don't know about you, but I came to tell him thank you because I can speak for myself. And if you and I don't tell him thank you, the Bible tells us the rocks will cry out. And I don't want any rocks speaking in my place. Today, if you don't know him, do what you need to do. And today, if you have a prayer request, we want to pray for you and pray with you. Let us all begin to pray for those in our community, those who've had death, those who've had loss, those who've had pain. We continue to pray for those who are recovering from the storm of Ian. We begin to pray and we thank God for those who've meant so much in our lives who've now crossed over to the other side. Our hearts go out to the family of Keith Wonderboy Johnson. Our hearts and our prayers go out to the family of Loretta Lynn. Our hearts and our prayers go out to all of those persons who have transitioned from this life to eternity. And my brothers and my sisters, let's do the right thing. Let's pray for them. Let's care for them. Let's lead them. Let's guide them. Because one day, all of us will find ourselves in those same similar circumstances. So today, let's pray for those who are providing disaster relief to our brothers and sisters in Florida and those all over the globe. Let's pray for those who have said, pray for me. So today, let's pray together. Gracious God, I thank you for these who have said, I need you, Lord, who are crying out. Lord, they have your attention and they have ours. Help us to reach out in love and compassion and to do the right thing. Help us to encourage those and remind them of their civic duties to get out, to register and to vote. And Father, remind us to vote for everyone on the ticket. Help us to vote for every office that we might live a quiet and peaceable life. And Father, we pray right now as we give you our vote of confidence. We trust you. So, Lord, we know you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we, which we're able to ask, say or think according to your power at work in us. So, God, do your work and help us to do the work you've assigned to us. Forgive us of our sins of commission and omission and help us to make a difference in the world. We pray for every congregation that gathers in your name. Keep them, lead them and guide them. And it's in Jesus name we pray. Now unto him, the great shepherd who sent his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless, preserve and keep you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. May he bless you in your leisure, your labor, your joys and your sorrows and give you hope for today and tomorrow. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Until the next time, always know that there's a place you can go where God's blessings are always flowing. And that's at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We we'll look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. And this year of 2022, God has a blessing in store for you. So just reach out and grab it because God is offering it. I'll see you on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. 
Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.